anything in other state there. Shannon, me they just want a word. Me just want to hear him say, me make a mistake. If he may say, then he try to chat to me, he you know. Me have to tell him, move from here, me, you know. Because me I tell you something, at the grace of God, make that boy is still there, because he face it, feel it up. All that. <laughs> All that energy, mm -hmm. exactly. You know what like. But guess what, no. One, a man is going to rape me, and walk off, no one saying rape me, and then two, me go hurt him and carry, carry that from my karma for the my life. So twice he get to violate me. I don't give him that. He not get that from me. He not get that from me. Right. He not go sit down the side. He not go watch me drive and see if them boy them. Maybe got them man there. No? Because them completely responsible for every success me have in my life. Sent me a boy them. I have to get up and say, you know what? Them not go see me. Me not go get so big that them can't miss me. Them not go get so big and I climb so high. That anywhere they go, they can't go nowhere upon earth where they not go book me. Yeah. That. And that's my motivation. We got a long down. Wow. <laughs> wow. A life. That's why I'm such a cynic. Nothing in a life no fears me because I see the humans and I know who them be. I know them. I see them. I see through them. I want pragmatics. I don't buy into the, the bag of emotions that people bring to my foot. I'm yeah. not interested. <laughs> because me know they're not most like no real channel. They're not care. You know why I'm asking about who he is? Because it makes me wonder, did he who else? Not did he, but who else did he do this to? Well, I I I was introduced to a few more of his victims. A couple more. Oh, mm -hmm. so he did. Yeah, he's a serial rapist. Oh my And people keep backing him and and God knows best and <laughs> You know, I always bring God for defend the criminal. I can't believe I love y'all so much. But yeah, when we talk to him, victims and them describe, when them describe directly to me, there's no way upon earth them can duplicate my process right. to me. And me never share it. Me not think it to, me not think they can make up, they can materialize out of thin ear my experience. And him have an MO. Oh my God. Yeah. And then for to happen, mm -hmm. this for them, though. And then for it to happen to you twice. Did you go through cuz I actually have a friend, oh god, who got raped twice, three times from social media, meeting somebody off Tinder and Facebook and stuff like that and she never told anybody for years because she blamed herself when it she's like, well, something must be wrong with me. Like, why would me multiple times? Like, how can this happen to me a second and a third time? Did you go through that yeah. as well? Yes. Yes. I felt for sure it must be my fault because twice, what are the odds? But the reality is the odds are not slim. In my adulthood and in later years when I've become more vocal and I've sat with women in every group, almost everybody in the group are multiple survivors survivors of of multiple events yeah. of the same part. You can't sit down in a room a, a Jamaican woman and don't talk to a whole heap of, if the room is big and it's full, you're going to talk to a whole heap of victims of sexual violence. Yeah. It happens in our homes. It happens at school. It happens in the workplace, in places of entertainment. It's everywhere. Yeah. Because if we have a rape culture that we don't want to admit. Right. We have a rape culture. Because we end up spending the whole evening at our rape. But we have a rape culture. And, we, and the moment we start to admit it is the moment we can begin to solve that problem. But we don't want to admit that. And we, want to, we blame the girls because we don't want to accept and admit that we are a part of this problem. And we don't want to do the work to solve it. When you hear a woman, look at another woman and say, go and raise the daughter right for my son. When a woman say, yo, my cute son I come fuck off all them girls. And the son is within earshot. When the son hears that, what are you telling him? All these girls belong to you. Yeah. So when he comes to collect his entitlement, he's not going to take a no. His mother told him that these girls belong to him. Our dialogue needs to change. The narrative needs to be changed on every level. Absolutely. Right Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh my God. And, it, and it, when girls wear, we get criminalized for what we wear. The first oh, time man. I got raped, I was in a skirt. A skirt would catch me on my knee and one blows. I looked like I was coming from Pentecost Church the first time. The second time I had on jeans, pants, 
and a, a long sleeve polo. If you had on a body rider, a pum pum shot, it wouldn't even. If you was walking around naked, first of all, if they plan to do that and I had on sackcloth, they would have done it. It makes no difference. Nuns get ripped. Rip is not about it's invitation. It's the exact opposite. About it's a choice. lack of invitation. Mm. And we keep misplacing the blame and we misdiagnose the problem and that's how we can solve it. It's a way Jamaica, Jamaica sideways, you know. Because I'm a favorite place on earth. My favorite, bar none. I don't have no close competition to Jamaica. I love me hard. And nobody can change that. I love me hard. I love the place. Some of the people them fuck up, but not all of them. But the one them fuck up, they really bad. Mm. And the one with, the one them were nice, them accommodate. Yep. And the neighbors, the one them were not nice. Me go always fight the problem. Me not give up on my yard. But me not gonna be one of them people sugarcoat it neither. Me, me not work for Ministry of Tourism. Me go tell you, if you come here, watch yourself, because them money love rape. Jesus Christ. Oh them money don't take no. Me go tell you that. You come here with a little picnic, and right in front of you, them tell you, say, your little picnic look sexy. Picnic. Them are some pedophile. Listen, I was walking with my niece one, one night in Bogwalk. Yeah. Two policemen were patrolling. They were on foot. And I was walking with my niece. My niece at the time was probably about 18, but she looks like she and she she act immature. She did, she looked like about 16. And we were walking together. A stranger would not have known it was my daughter. She was my niece. And up one of the policemen approached her beside me and started trying to chat on her. Of course, me not, me not going to say nothing. She's an adult. She could have, if she wanted to entertain him, I would not have raised any kind of alarm. But she said no. She actually said no. She rejected his advance. Mm -hmm. And he kept coming. And he kept coming and he just kept coming until I was like, God damn. Right. You know, you know here she said no. Right. Move from near my picnic. Right. Picnic? What do you mean by picnic? Like, sir, move. No, but what do you mean by picnic? How old is she? I'm like, that's none of your fucking business. Well, she said, no, that's it. She said, no, and I said, picnic. What? <sighs> listen, man, me nearly lay an egg. Because you know me already have, no, no, listen. Coming out of my experiences, I suffer from acute paranoia. I have trust issues. Yeah. I have a whole heap of issues that we'll come out of that. Mm -hmm. I see them, I acknowledge them, I embrace them. It's okay. I can live with them. I'm a superpower that. My paranoia saved my life a whole heap of time. So, you know, so when him come down and start talking to her, you know, this a trigger me in all different kinds of ways. Right. Because I hear her, I say no, and she's not somebody who's reserved with her no. And we're up on the road, side Shannon. We're up on the road with a whole heap of people around up on a weekend. Can you imagine? If him back her up by herself somewhere, and him a police. No, this is an intimidating man because him in a uniform and him having gun for him. How many young girls has he approached who were never interested? Right. Were afraid of him. Right. This is what we have in a Jamaica. You know? And them are going to tell me, so you talk so bad about Jamaica. Like nowhere else, no bad like you. Jamaica, me live and me. I just want to care about Yo. I cannot. I, uh, I'm at a loss for words. Idea, listen, you think this bad? You wait until we get, when we get comfortable enough to start up with the little boys. Yo, oh, that's we another get, layer. Get up, we lift up. It bad. It really Listen, girl, we have work for do. A lot. Enough. So, Andrew, let's better. I don't know what I'm going with him and COVID, but he may have start paying attention to the things that I'm going to hear about. Because I know everybody gets COVID, but most people get raped here. Yeah. Listen, oh my God. I just, I just don't, I just, the strength on you is just so admirable. Like, I just, I never even know that you went through that. Never even know that you went through I mean, that. I mean, there was a time when I couldn't talk about it. It's not, me, me don't, no, I don't want to give a wrong impression to people who are, Dealing with that right now, cause me never, me not just get up and strong. Enough things if me ever tell us something imagine. along the way. Yeah, and I have also been in therapy. Yeah. Now me have the benefit of the ability to afford therapy. Not everybody does. Right. And I, I have tried 
to direct people to therapy here in Jamaica and I've, I've had difficulty. So, it, I, I mean, the, the, the facilities which are available are sometimes overwhelmed and underfunded, you know, so it's hard. So for everybody out there, where, where actually any therapists who want to volunteer, hit me up. I mean, I have no shortage. Every time we have discussions like these, we have an influx of people where I reach out. I've spoken to people. One woman who met me ball ball, me said one night, me couldn't, well, not one night, one night, me can't sleep, but one particular night, I spoke to a woman who said she was 75 and she got molested before she was 10, under 10. And speaking to me at 75 years old was the first time she had told nobody. Oh my, my ball, God. Food. I couldn't talk ball. I don't know why I feel like to keep that inside of me all that time. And never tell a living soul. She's like, she just couldn't tell nobody. And Jesus, you know how much people in the music right now, you see them, some of them girls who you see right now. Look like them are holding together and people criticize them for all different kind of things. If you hear their story, them go through it too. Yeah. Them go through it too. Some of the older ladies too go through it already. Yeah. We all, we all, listen, we all broken, you know. We all are trying to find a way to survive. And we're just some kids in adult bodies, bodies trying to, trying to stay, keep it together. Yeah. And we, the moment we stop judging each other and start being a shoulder, start being more empathetic, start understanding that we might be going through different things, but we are going through something. Be more understanding. You know, don't, don't just cast judgment at the first glance. Yeah. You might not be able to help, but at least shut up. Just shut up. But in the interim, we will never stop chat. Don't. <laughs> we, never, no. we will never, never. I'm sure there's people on this live have gone through the same thing. We were. Or worse, right? We were. I may empathize with them, I may feel for them, and it's rough. Shannon, it's rough, man. And right now, every, for every woman out there who never experienced this, believe me, I'm really, really happy for you. I don't wish this for my worst enemy. I yeah. have no human dead or alive when I want to experience this. It, it's too much. It alters you. Right. I don't know who I would have been. Right. I have no idea. I am forever altered, and I can never ever know who i was gonna be completely stole your innocence. because they intersected right yeah. completely stole your innocence as a teenager take everything take everything it's like everything i am after that moment is something that's built on that moment it come up in a everything like granted them boy they have no power over me right now you know? but them already do what they alter and what them already do back then right right i don't know they how people it. like that sleep at night I just don't get it. Comfortably. Comfortably. They're, they actually are products of their environment too. So here's, here's some of the, the things that um, survivors of, of sexual violence end up um, struggling with. So people say, um, why didn't you report it? Why didn't you report it? All right? Cool. That sounds like a good idea. No. If you report it, if we, we have the burden because to be honest with you most people who have experienced sexual violence end up having empathy for everybody around their rapist now i'm i, I first i got raped by somebody whose mother i knew and was around and me think about her all this about affects she nicest woman loving caring come like a female mother too in sister my party in sister she nice as fuck and you think about he is the one person where all of them are depend on him are the him are the guy. Him are the, the major breadwinner. Plus that him are the hope of the family, a country people. Them. Yeah. And when you do yes, when you rip the fabric from under them. First of all, I don't like no one may have resources. But then if I spoke, he probably would have the sense somebody come kill me. I don't like no mm -hmm. when he must be he, he, he wouldn't dare. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but if I would have managed to say something and live, I would have been pulling the rug from under other people. What we actually care about too. And we, we, we tend to invalidate those cares as if they don't matter, but they do matter. Because me a part of our environment, me know these people. I may have the discernment for no say, him do me something, them never do me nothing, and me not know that they know because you know, act like that around them. Mm. So all of these things, it shouldn't be my, my job. This is not my responsibility for care about them, you know. 
but me want human and me humane, so me care about them too. And and going through extreme trauma actually makes you more empathetic, I think. Everybody want me know. No one want to. <laughs> <laughs> I drink I get though. <laughs> It makes me, it made me more, more aware of other people. And it makes me feel for them. Like, all right, may I go through this? May I don't go through this? May I go just hold it? Because what's the point in me making more people go through it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, may I just, may, may I go just hold that one sitting there by myself? Because I don't hold it already. It's kind of like you and your friends go up on a robbery and they hold you. You're not going to rat out your friend. You don't get charged already. You know, just hold it, man. You didn't know where you do when you do it. So you rub a little sentence and you stop in eyes. You know, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't no snitches. <laughs> so I'm hold it. It's a stupid narrative, you know? It's a really stupid reason, but that's how we live. And then, I'm hold sir, it. on top of it, that's a whole nother layer. Only cancers are going to understand that. That's a whole <laughs> nother layer. You're up, man. We, we up here. We're in our heads. And to have that like trauma up here as a cancer on top of on top of it is just I can't even imagine how you dealt with that. I just can't. That's 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 a lot. Me no know me da know. Cause me no me no claim no superpower. You know me no know. Me go me deal with it one day at a time, one event at a time, one moment at a time. In a every me go through one phase where I remember seeing it on a T-shirt. Avoid rape. Say yes. What? I'm going to take that as my man for a while. You've never seen that? Child, that is an actual popular, popular statement. Oh, it's a popular, it's a popular part of culture. Say All over. Yes. Yes. That, especially in the late 80s, early 90s, girl, that was very popular. I don't know if before that, but me know semi grew up, I see that as a avoid rape say yes was on, I remember seeing it on a t-shirt what and i wanted it was a t-shirt somebody had on i wanted to get one of those t-shirts because i felt like i was owning my life and myself and i felt like i was in charge of myself if i said yes nobody got to thanks nobody got to actually extract a yes from me oh because i said yes so even if i wasn't planning to, or didn't want to say yes then i would have say yes just to maintain sovereignty it was the weirdest. It's a lot of madness going on, you know. Holy for madness. May I go tell you this? I, I, I remember expressing, I remember describing a phase coming out of um, those experiences, which I, I in, in that phase, I felt like if no looking back or, or after the phase, looking back, it felt like I lowered, I deliberately lowered my standard. Yeah. To avoid disappointment. Yeah. Avoid disappointment or hurt. And I remember one time I post, I think up on my Facebook, I made a talk about it a few years ago. And I say, some of the people I'm deal with, me and them not belong in the same space. Neither psychologically or no other kind of alley. Some of them would have to look down through an electron microscope to see them in a real state. Because me don't know. I don't know, but when nobody see me, when, see when them look for me, you know, but me can tell you this. I'm superior. <laughs> I'm very superior. And I'm, I'm not, you. I don't even claim being human because I'm disdainful of regular, typical human behavior. Yeah. And some of the people I'm, when I when me consult with, I look back and I can't imagine, like, oh my God. What the? I really was going through something and nobody never noticed this. Right, right. Like you see me, you know me, you know my steer, you know my brain, you know some you know some arrogant, you know some this full. you know say me smart. I may want to stop your sexual my entire life. Me go for brains. Right, right. Me really not drawn to body. Yeah. And you see me I talk to that creep there, you see me I talk to that toe jam. And you never realize this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Not told you, but what I mean? I yeah. damn, but damn, that's part of the post behavior, you know, because that comes after. You know how much people I meet, I have similar experiences. I listen to people talk about them life, and I swear my life them I talk about. Yeah, the way all them behave after. Yeah, 
Because after when you're in a low self-esteem or no self-esteem phase, eh? because remember, you know, we live in a society where reinforced rape culture, you know? right? We tell you, to, even though them pretend, all them people here are going righteous and pretend, so them four rapists, you know, all of them have dialogue. Me have a friend with me and him followed because he said, well, me, me make sure I make my daughter them know, say, this, that, 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 and my daughter, my daughter know, say, this not happen and blah, blah, and Basically saying, he reinforces, he, Kelly, he reinforces his daughter so that that couldn't happen to her. Which is ridiculous. And I'm trying to explain to him that when you said that to your daughter, what you're actually saying to your daughter in the event that happens is that she failed. And guess what? She's not going to come to you because you have made it abundantly clear that you put measures in place. So that that shouldn't happen to her. Right. So if it happened to her, it's her fault. Exactly, exactly. So she's not gonna come to you. All these, all of the conversation they want change, you know. And all me I try to explain to people, they just now listen. Yeah. Them think me like that, and then them tell me me love to about rape. Like, no, I do not. I wish it would go away so that I don't have to talk about it at all. Right. But you keep keeping it alive, you know. Girl, yeah. it's a lot. We have enough work to do. No. Like my. But big up all of the. Big up all of the agencies, all of the NGOs, all of the groups, every group working. Because trust me, the work is hard. And just being a part of this, um, just, be, just being around people who have invited me to come and do stuff with them. And um, by conversation, you know, you end up near more people working. And people like E for Life, uh, the groups like E for Life, rather, um, who are there for young mothers. Yeah especially from adverse circumstances they work hard and the f there's no funding you know there's little to no funding and they try their best and they impact a lot of lives but they can't do everything right so me big them up and me thank them just knowing that they're there and i try to impact as much as me can people ask me for for help and try to turn me into a therapist but i tell them i might do more harm than good because I'm not trained for that. But do you think and that, I that could be, do you think that that could be therapeutic for you though? I do have conversations with them, but when I when I assess the level of damage, yeah, and I recognize that I cannot help, I refer them to a professional because I don't want to do more damage. Yeah, and any anything can do more damage. Mm -hmm. You know, just I'm, I'm not trained for that. I'm, I'm, I'm know my limits. Yeah, um, we don't have enough professionals, or if they they are here, then they're not visible enough we don't know them enough listen we we, we need to step up with mental health yeah. industry remember the first time i tried go therapy was in jamaica i got to one man with popular have a radio show because i am the only name i know yeah i'm going to sit down there in there and talk to him girl wrong one whole session ask a few questions so i don't feel like me get nothing out of the session it was like me just sit down and listen to myself talk and then when we're done you know what the man said what? Session done, I'm going to go in on him say, Tanya Stevens. The great Tanya Stevens. So I have to go listen to the music, listen oh. to the music again with a, with a new ear. And I'm like, wow. Seriously? Seriously? What the hell? I never felt so naked in my entire life. And then book me an appointment to come back for the next session. I was like, yeah, sure. Cool. Me, if you see me back again, I must have a picture. I was for TV. <laughs> what yo? Oh my! I ran and kept running. I took my therapy when I was outside of Jamaica to people who don't know who the fuck I am when I was anywhere right. with enough time right. to get. Back. And then that's another layer: being in the public eye and trying to maintain some mm. level of privacy. Jesus! Somebody said unprofessional. No, that's that's beyond unprofessional. Listen, big up every bartender. My therapist, them there. <laughs> 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 listen i can't say that i don't understand that part of it listen oh my god man what a conversation look i didn't even expect to, to talk about this but you know god has a funny yeah. of, you know making things happen and i'm so so glad to know you and i'm so like i can't even believe that you're so brave and you're just so courageous to just share your story like i think that that's honorable I really do. Like I, I just don't. I just don't know how people come back from that. Like when I look at my friend that this happened to, she's just different. She's different, 
And I felt so bad that I was, wasn't able to be there for her because she never told anybody. And then when she, she just casually said it and made a joke about, oh yeah, the time that I got raped, you know? And I was like, what? Ooh. She made a joke about it. She's like, yeah, about four years ago. And then, yeah, and then it happened again. And I was like, what? I was like, you know, I know some goons that ain't got shit to lose. <laughs> coping mechanism, though. <laughs> when she gets to that place, this is a co this is a part of coping. You know, yeah, you, you have to you have to find a way to let it out because it's kind of like a cancer inside of you. And if you don't get it out, the moment I started talking about it, I immediately started to feel better. Yeah, and I just kept feeling better. And when I speak to other people and they say I've helped them in any way, yeah. it made me feel better too. Yeah. And I, I try to warn girls who have not yet experienced that. Yeah. You know, but there's no way though, because predators, predators find your weak spot. That's what they do. So all these parents out there who are preparing their kids for predators, you know, all of them would think they're super strict. Yeah, and they, and they think that only poor kids get it now. Uptown people who seek validation get it too. Yeah. Yeah, there are a lot of people out there they have all the creature comforts, but they, they feel like shit in their own skin. And they're happy to have that guy come and pick up their daughter or son. It's it's um a claim by association. Yeah. They're happy to brag. Like, you know who was at my house last weekend? <laughs> no, you mean the guy who's fucking your kid? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh my God! Yeah, it's that. That's that's a thing. <laughs> the things that women have to go through. I feel like most of the women that I know either were molested as as kids, raped, some sort of sexual assault, something. I remember yeah. when I was fourteen, walking down the street, just walking down the street. It was July Fourth. I remember exactly what I had on. This man put his hand underneath my skirt, grabbed my my grabbed me from front to back and I you want to talk about if you were paranoid from that the paranoia that I experience every time I walk I'm looking behind me I'm looking behind me I just got over that maybe three four years ago I stopped looking behind me and this happened when I was 14 14 mm. every single woman every woman I know another one of my friends a homeless guy grabbed her Grabbed her whole pum pum from uh, the same shit happened to her, but she <laughs> ran his ass down and fucked him up. Ran him down. <laughs> ran him down. <laughs> but I was a little 14 year old girl and I was so like shocked. I couldn't really, I was like, did he just really grab me? Mm. I, I'd never experienced anything sexual, nothing. Still was a virgin, all of that. You come and come, that. I, most of the women I know have gone through something traumatic. Yeah, that's not. But okay. we have, a, we actually have a minister, a minister of what is he minister of again? Um, Delroy Chuck. Delroy Chuck is minister of what again, Craig? Um, not not national security, but he's minister of justice. He's minister of justice. Our minister of justice was talking about. They were um looking at a law to reform or to add an act or something. And they, he, in Parliament, said, we don't want what's happening in America to happen. We don't want uh, anything like what's happening in America to happen. You know? So if you, you know, you're on an elevator and somebody um, says something 10 years ago, if you didn't say anything then, sure, don't bother with it. Like, what? This is a minister of justice. <laughs> And, the, and let me tell you, Jamaican people, some of them don't understand the severity of this. He should not remain in that position. He's still there. I already lost any hope for this party from a long time ago. The man said, if you didn't speak then, no, I don't think they understand the confidence that the Minister of Justice needs to instill in the citizens of the country. Now, the Minister of Justice thinks you don't deserve justice because 10 years passed. So 10 years ago, I was violated. And 10 years after, it doesn't matter anymore because I didn't speak then. I was too weak. I, and this is the nature of this crime because when it just happens to you, you're too weak to speak. Sometimes it takes therapy. It takes family, if you have that, a circle, village, to bring you back to normalcy, to then be able to speak. And when you can only speak in 10 years, they tell you, statute of limitations. Right. Statute of limitations. 
And and the irony and it, and for, for, for his title to be justice. Justice minister. Girl, and listen, I had arguments with Jamaican people, you know, and I'm just, I have a twisted sense of humor. A really twisted sense of Life has beaten my sense of humor out of shape. It's very twisted and dented and broken. And I have had arguments on social media with people who are defending him. Women too. Unbelievable. These are these are all people who are suffering from Stockholm syndrome you know, because we're held captive in a system that abuses us. Right. And over time, we learn to love it and start to defend it. And that's the only excuse I can find for it. This is Stockholm syndrome on a grand scale because they're defending the Minister of Justice who says women don't deserve justice. Right. And then women in parliament, there are women in parliament and I'm looking at them like, I have no respect for any of you. Any of you. You should be the first one to call him out and be like, take him down, take right. him down. Red and ready. And then him come back with a half ass apology saying wife and daughter. Tell him, listen, but you never say your wife and daughter. You should have said you thought about it. Your wife and daughter have to tell us that wrong, brother. You shouldn't be minister of justice. You have no concept of justice. Who are putting these people... Besides the voters, of course. But how do Listen people to get to even run and even be a part of... I, I, I'm, I'm so confused. Listen, I want to go back in time and stitch up the birth canal he came down. <laughs> Seriously? I want to stitch it up with a real needle and thread. <laughs> like use some fucking nylon and stitch that shit up so that nothing can go up there and nothing can come down. Seriously? You, you, you can't imagine you come out of one woman and talk like that. Right. Where are these men coming from? Like, we, we need to start lock with leg and broke a neck. Because them men are not deserve to burn. You come down out of me. And then you come stand up and deprive me of my, my very right. Like, where we get them from? And, they, and then Jamaican men act like they love women. Like, stop it, man. You need to find yourself a man. You don't love women. Stop. Stop. stop lying. Stop lying. Stop. You can't fool me. <laughs> we must have gone about three hours. Oh my God, I have no concept of time. Made up a universal time. Oh, Shannon, go go I'm about to go out, girl. You, you go out? Don't I pour me two minutes in a lockdown? <laughs> Don't I pour me because my granny, Andrew, will say me I figure out my bed. <laughs> it's like me live with my granny. Yeah, it's after eight for you, right? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope you stub your toe up and address a corner. You lick a toe. <laughs> oh, I just love you. <laughs> Enjoy yourself for the tour, yeah? Absolutely. I love you. I will. Oh, my God, Tanya, 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 Tanya. Jesus. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, as always. I adore you. I love you for real. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your intelligence. Thank you for your contribution to dance hall, everything. You are loved and you are appreciated. I thank you. And I love your conversations and I am a fan. Besides the fact that I think you are my best friend, but I love you, I love you. Your interviews are amazing and entertaining. I think today is a little too somber, but no, you is. are great. And I hope you keep going and grow. And I want to see you with a TV show and everything. Can you please just keep growing? Thanks. Thank you so much for the support. I appreciate it. No, these conversations need to be had. I feel like there needs to be a balance, you know? And yeah. I don't want to just sit and do interviews. Like, so tell me about your new music. No, that's not what it's about <laughs> for me. It's about these really? conversations, <laughs> you know, to make people expand people's, con you know, uh, consciousness and make people aware of what's really happening. So, and you are a part of that movement. So thank you again. And uh, y'all need to go drink Mozart. Let me send you some, I can't send you no damn Mozart. You don't have no people in Listen, Florida. Where are you? You're in New York. Yeah. All right, me soon tell you when somebody will come. Then bring it to me. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, you guys, All right. thank you. Whoever bought badges tonight, thank you so much for your support. Y'all, please continue to support Tanya. If you want a Tanya's followers and you don't follow me, please hit the follow button. And if you want my followers and you don't follow Tanya, please do the same. All right? Oh, we got a toast. I don't, I don't have no more liquor, but I got liquor right here. <laughs> I want to go What are we toasting to? Normalcy. Want to get back to life. <laughs> in every way. In every way. In the mind, yeah. physical, all that. Yeah. yeah. So Bang. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you again. And oh, yeah, follow DJ Tandy, who 
open the oh yeah we got dj tandy we need to go follow too yes yes send me send me the link dm please i definitely will definitely all right yeah. have a Later, good night girl. you too have fun Bye, boo. <laughs> later guys oh and if y'all did want to know what was on my lips i saw some people asking it's my own oh yeah it's called pretty smack it's my own lipstick line that i launched in um february so you can follow right here on Instagram, Pretty Smack Official, or you could visit the website. It's link in my bio or pretty smack dot online. There's buy one get one yeah. happening right now too. So check my stories, check the details. It's in there somewhere. All right, you guys. Let me pick up someone post up my picture. Them and tag you with it. Yes, too. I need to send you some lipstick for real, for real. Let me send you yeah. some lipstick. Yes. yes. No, you just need to tell me where they're buy. Okay. Why you think sell? Me no want none for free. <laughs> That one. <laughs> hey, I'm never gonna tell nobody. Don't don't put no money in my pocket now. I'm buying it. So, all right. Later. Have fun. Thank you. Later. Bye. Yeah.